here, San Marcos. This is the front porch stoop speech from LMC. I don't want to put my lips on this. Maybe some red paint from China. It's thank you, Belvinville uh, Parade, by the way. So, y'all, I want to say that I've been following the Code Rodeo since its inception. And y'all know me. I'm all about the political participation, showing up to open houses, showing up to public hearings, showing up to citizen comments. I showed up to their technical meetings, two of which were deleted from the website that I called their attention to. And I have email sports correspondence proving that. I wrote a letter to the editors. I did open records requests on how much those consultants were paid. And I want to say it was a waste of my time. It was, it, you may, some of y'all may say LMC put a lid on it. But you know what? When people show up on their own time and they offer suggestions, I don't just call, go up to these things and complain, y'all. I actually offer suggestions. Shudder the thought. So I asked for increased protection for Native American artifacts. That has, American, Native American, that has not occurred, y'all. It hasn't. They say least likely to develop. Well, guess where that is? The downtown. And their news reports, there's two now, there's two news stories, one from Matthew Lewis, another one recently that was in the Community Impact. Brett Thorne, who never quotes anybody who has an activist bone in their body. If you have a whistle around your neck, Thorne ain't gonna quote you, peeps. They admitted they did all that infrastructure downtown for future development. That should be least likely to develop because that's for all the archaeologists, people. Plus, there's a toxic waste plume under the downtown that's been changing. And TCEQ, y'all know it's changing because that's what your analytical notes say, even though your narrative tries to say otherwise. The same study that the TCEQ, y'all, said that they can, they told me they can, they, oh, we got some new data. I said, send it to me. You know what data they sent? The stuff from 2013 at the end of the year. No studies were, were conducted before they dug into that earth downtown until LMC dropped an email to the TCEQ. So we have no additional tree protection, heritage tree protection. There's not going to be any fines. That's what a lot of us wanted. I don't see that happening. There's no additional, like, workflow to protect the oldest non-nomadic civilization in the northern hemisphere this is like the Chiap pyramid zone people and we celebrate Cinco de Mayo but we have no real protection for the real Indians that were here years ago gosh what else was there y'all there's a bunch of stuff I wrote up in letters to the editor and I even made video blogs about it so next time there's a code rodeo I'm gonna say in a three-minute speech the trajectory of the videos the letters to the editor all the meetings I attended all the online events I went to even the, 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 the they had like a SMTX talks people and I wrote like two speeches on it and none of my proactive suggestions ever made the table okay so on top of it, they're hiring people within my specific skill set, a communication consultant from Austin as a way to bypass activists who volunteer to do communication consulting. And by the way, crowd control y'all did not maintain. I'm upset because I invested personal time into that and nothing has changed. And I keep talking about it and nothing's changed. So if you guys want to pretend like you're opening up the process to everybody, some of us know their shenanigans, and I'm going to continue now to call people out on it. I've, I've had it. Cheers. That was a front porch stoop speech. <laughs> and y'all, I know that the state legislature's got those rules, and there's all these state laws about artifacts, but you know what, citizens? We've got a lobbyist. <laughs> I, for people like me, we don't care, y'all. Uh, anything over the city level. I, I rarely get involved in pol uh, county politics, y'all. By the way, I'm drinking a fat tire. I love fat tires. <laughs> My grandma, y'all, brewed beer. She was Belgium from Belgium, and she brewed Belgium beer. So I'm drinking this for you. We have a state lobbyist that could go talk about artifact protection. And I don't care if it's realistic or not. It's the principle of the matter. You get paid. People in our town have a concern. It's the oldest non-nomadic civilization in the Northern Hemisphere. Make a stand. Use your life to make a stand, lobbyist. And y'all on the dais, ask him or her to do it. Now, the city of Austin has some really strict ordinances on trees. And I know the residents get pissed off. And I wish we had something like that that made the developers think twice for repose. 
I know downtown y'all can't control the artifacts, but y'all did a lot of work with those, all that, you know, the stuff with the, um, the roads. Now I'm just ranting. But anyway, I understand that y'all have concerns, City of San Marcos and my friends on the dais. You've got, you're constricted when it comes to artifacts, but put a little bit of political pressure and have them do something at the state level. And for gosh sakes, let's protect the trees before they're all gone. I know everybody's hyper-focused on the river and the headwaters and the aquifer, and praise God that we have people in this town that do that. But some of us also have other interests. It's about time we start to protect the archaeology of our town. If you're a Christian and you pray to a higher power, think about how you would feel if your grandmother's artifacts were dug up. Mine probably will have an iPad next to it, but that's my choice. Cheers. Front porch doofy. Y'all, I've got more to say. I was just going to upload that video, but you know what? <laughs> let's just face it. Let's, let's, let's face it. The downtown should not only be least likely to develop because of what uh, the archaeology, but it should also be least likely to develop because of the businesses. Have those businesses been compensated that got flooded out? I want to know, were the people that were flooded out downtown, did they get a check, lickety split from the city, or are they getting the runaround? That's what I would like to know. Those of you who are downtown business owners, if you got flooded out, please contact me and let me know how quickly you got compensated for getting flooded out by faulty downtown construction of engineers who are not on the job. I mean, we let the tree go over there at the taco stand the text dot actually cut down right and then and, and we had trees getting taken away by private landowners over there some real close family friends of mine and we had to fight to save their trees and they still took some of their land so you guys talk about least like developing terms of archaeology let's talk about what y'all done to the small business downtown and now you've made way for all this development these high rises that are going to ruin the landscape y'all of our city we're a charming downtown. When I drove down 35, rolled in today, I was shocked. It looked like one big University of uh, Pueblo. But I know what's going on over there. Uh, the irony is the buildings look like the Pueblos, but they're building over the Clovis. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Y'all have done nothing to protect the neighborhood integrity. And uh, the structure that y'all are using for your land development code everybody always says is the LDC thank goodness we have good people on the council who will use some scruples when they make these votes but it all comes down to how y'all structure that and that's coming from the staff level because I know people are showing up and I know I got applause in some of those things I said in some of those videos those code rodeo guys try to shut me down they wouldn't even put eminent domain on those powerpoints I pleaded with them to put my issues on the powerpoints while they're gathering information from the public and they specifically ignored me so why should people show up with suggestions if you guys, the people that my tax dollars are paying for, can't put them on the PowerPoints? This is important because people spend time showing up to these things. I could be watching MTV. I don't watch the news or playing video games. Maybe I should get into video games or something and make money doing that or online gambling because there's no payoff on ideology in this town for people who show up. And certainly, if your last name is not Carson or Morris, you're not going to get any work. And by the way, the chair of the Code Rodeo is still breaking a 2008 permit on Hunter Road, threatening the flooding of everyone else. Meanwhile, his high rise is digging into the earth well past the, the depth of a 25 feet perp plume, of which the only thing blocking the river from the perp plume is his development. So he's getting special exceptions. They haven't slapped him. Do y'all see this? Here. It's a rant now. Do you see this recycling bin? It has not moved since I requested the city of San Marcos in the questions of answers. Oh, the first I ever did, that was kind of fun, mixing up with you, Guerrero, because I know about topicality and how to make arguments that relate to the agenda. This has not moved since that speech, what, two citizen comments ago? Because I'm breaking the ordinance, but it doesn't hurt anybody. But Mr. Carson's breaking the landfill ordinance on Hunter Road, and you could see all the mounds, y'all. And not only that, but they're killing trees. And that's how everybody knew about it. All the tree people found out about it and got on it. And y'all haven't done anything. 
that's all I have to say. Oh, and by the way, I'm glad I broke the story on that uh, building over there downtown. Sam Mark's News Life out scooped y'all. All right, that's enough sass from Coppoletta. Peace out. Front porch stoop speech.